one thing with having anxiety sometimes things get overwhelming what happens is sometimes I cannot do simple things that I should be able to do for instance I sewed my winter veg and then I had a kind of flare-up I didn't come onto the garden for about a week and I left some of my seeds outside to harden enough and now they look like this and it's pretty frustrating because obviously I took a lot of time and care and nurture to get them to the point where they were looking lush and green and now they look like this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rescue the plants that I can and I'm still going to use those but what I will say is because I know myself already I already knew that I'd over sown plants in this first batch I've done some succession growing that means that I've already got another batch of plants around about one or two weeks behind these ones so I know that I can just replace them so if you're watching this and you've ever felt the same don't worry you're not alone I think it happens to more people and I think we should talk about it a bit more often anyway today's video is going to be me trying to get this garden in order I'm going to show you all of my empty containers that I've got now we're going to direct sow a couple of plants and I'm also going to be bringing some stuff into the house so let's get straight into it I created a poll on a recent TikTok video I made. I asked if anyone ever felt overwhelmed by their garden and a resounding 87% of people said yes. So if you're currently feeling this way, don't worry, you really are not alone. There are more people and hopefully by the end of this video, you'll find a reason to get back up and get out into your garden. So I'm here at Chawton Nursery. I've come to get one or two plug plants just to fill the gaps in what I'm missing due to those seeds not going to plan. I have already done a video on Chawton Nursery, so I'll leave a link up here for you to go and check that out. But let's have a look and see what they have. When I dropped in, I could see they've already got a head start getting all their spring bulbs ready, but they also had some autumn and winter crops as well. Just look at some of these. I was just gonna get one or two. For goodness sakes, Jason how okay this garden cleanup is going to have to be epic because i need to make space now for all of these new plants you know we can't come out onto the garden without feeding the fish i have been training them so that when i tap the sides of the pond they know to come up and feed but as i've not been present on the garden they've gone back to being really scared so it took a while for them to appear here's an update on the brassica patch it's all looking pretty good the broccoli and cauliflower that are regrowing from the stems seem to be flourishing in their brand new spot. The cabbage is doing great too. My only concern is the red cabbage in the corner. The metal railing and the grey cladding seem to be conducting the cold temperatures so it's affected the leaves. So I'm just going to turn it slightly. I've dug up quite a bit of stuff and as you can see I've got a load of empty containers. This is my justification for that plant haul. <laughs> in this container I've got some mustard, I can't wait for that. And in this next one, this had the beans in it and because of the nitrogen in the soil I'm going to replace the beans with lettuce. But imagine my surprise when under the container I found these. I have a chrysalis here and also a caterpillar. They're both from the same species of moth. They've both decided to overwinter on the cloud garden. I'm gonna be moving pots quite a bit, so I decided to make them a safe little home. I filled out this muffin box with some leaf litter and made some holes on the lid. This is new to me. I never knew that caterpillars could also overwinter. I'd always assumed that they only overwinter in the chrysalis stage. Although he's changed color from the bright green, this guy's still very much alive. I added them both to my brand new moth hotel. I'll make sure to update you guys all throughout winter and spring. This container is a complete disgrace. This giant weed has taken over it, but I had left it for quite some time just because it produced some flowers and I did have some hoverflies and one or two bees hovering around. So I recognized that they could be a valuable food source. But as the temperatures have dropped, so has the frequency of visitors. So it was time to get rid of this. 
now in this container I'm already thinking about next year so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be growing some peas in this container now in one of my previous videos I've mentioned that legumes they put nitrogen back into the soil which is really great for your leafy greens it helps to promote really great leaves so what I'm going to do is I'll grow the peas in this container and then next year when I reuse that container I will then in my mind know that I've got a good healthy nitrogen rich soil for a plant or a flower that is super leafy as messy as this container is there are actually two perennials in here which are absolutely stunning I just can't remember what they're called so I'm just going to take those out and look at the root system amazing I'm going to overwinter it in its own separate container and then next year I'll be able to plant them out I managed to rescue some of the pea plants but as I looked a little bit closer yet again my poor peas were attacked by aphids in November it really is a never-ending battle out here so I had to remove some of these aphids before I planted them into the container I'm also going to direct sow some peas into the container too I always find that peas don't do very well after being transferred but secondly I don't know whether or not these guys are going to make it so rather than allow myself to be disappointed I'll put a couple of peas in here and then I can either harvest for pea shoots or leave them to mature but either way I'll be covered you guys look at these crusty old potatoes I found in the back of my cupboard I'm not gonna let these go to waste I'm gonna plant these up today as you can see they've got all of these little growths on and what I could do is chop this in half and then essentially I would have two seed potatoes but on this occasion because I'm just using a small container for these potatoes I'm just going to plant both of them whole with these plants I'm not going to be hilling them so there's a whole process with potatoes when you plant them you're supposed to hill them so you put them into the soil and then as the greenery starts to grow you then fill it with a little bit more soil and so on so forth what I'm going to do is make some holes in the soil in the containers and then and pop the potatoes in then cover it with soil that is it I'm not doing anything else nothing else fancy with it I've tried it both ways in small containers and for me there is absolutely no difference so it is what it is it might be the middle of November but my tomato plants did not get the memo they are still producing more and more fruit they've grown taller than the glass railing so I thought that they would have died in the last frost but they're still going I used to feel some type of way about using plug plants but you know sometimes things just don't go to plan I've got no qualms using plug plants but what I will say is being a gardening channel I do have an issue with people buying stuff and then pretending that they've grown so I just want full transparency with you guys the other thing I'd say is using someone like Chawton Nurseries they grow all of their own crops and what that means to me is they have got their own polytunnel and in that polytunnel they grow most of their produce they've grown it outside and then are selling it that means when I put them out onto my garden the likelihood is, is that they are going to survive if you go to some of those big box stores sometimes they are grown in these magical perfect conditions in indoor environment then they get shipped to stores they sit outside for a bit and then they get purchased by us taken home and they aren't even used to being outside and that's why sometimes you can buy things and then they die so for me if I have the choice about going out to buy plug plants I'm always going to look for one of my local garden nurseries in order to go and make my purchases okay you guys we are now on day three of me trying to get this blasted garden in order <laughs> Now, this happens to be my favorite plant that I picked up from Chawton Nursery so let me show you that now how beautiful are these now I'm pretty sure it is a red cabbage obviously you can eat them but I think I'm gonna have some as ornamental plants as well I they're just the color is so striking now the other thing I picked up was some curly kale so I do have my massive dinosaur kale but it would be really cool to have some crunchy curly kale as well so I'm gonna put up some of these too I'm also growing some of these from seed as well so I'm gonna have a mixture of plug plants and seeds I also picked up some scented geraniums and oh 
they are absolutely beautiful and they smell gorgeous so what i'm going to do is i'm going to have these next to the door to the balcony just so that every time i come out i get greeted by this beautiful aroma so the container for the potatoes was there but in actual fact the potatoes are going to stay on this side you're going to hear me say this a billion and one times but if you're a balcony gardener you need to know your balcony's own microclimate so for me if the potatoes are next to the glass there is a chance that they will get waterlogged from rain when it does rain the only part of the garden that would ever get wet is the side closest to the barrier anything next to this wall doesn't get any rain on it and what you don't want is for your potato container to get too waterlogged because otherwise your potatoes will rot I learned that lesson the hard way so this year I've now learned that actually I need to make sure that my container is away from the glass this is what the garden looked like three days ago when I started as you can see it is just a mess it needed some serious sweeping pruning deadheading and TLC so I finally finished uh, it's taken me about three days so let me take you on a mini balcony garden tour and show you what the garden looks like at the now. moment we've got a whole heap of the brassicas here that I haven't managed to put up but we've planted some of them along here and we've still got this big old cabbage over here we've got the dinosaur kale here and if you saw my last couple of balcony garden videos we've got the, the broccoli and the cabbage weeding itself which is regrowing from the stems we've got the potatoes over here on this side and then look at the difference in three days uh, the tomatoes but yep yeah, they're ripening up you can never go wrong with geraniums they're just so awesome and then we've got some chilies still going in fact these have now begun to ripen up I still couldn't figure out the name of this perennial but I will definitely find out before the next balcony garden update how cool is this after three days it's already producing new growth as well right now it's half past three and as you can see the sun is just about to set but this side of the garden is in full sun and you can see that half of the garden is a little bit darker so the tomatoes are on this side the brassicas on that side because they'll enjoy the sun and in here we've got the mustard we've got peas in here so the peas will trellis up the arch we've got some of the spinach that's in here now I've still got Malabar spinach in here it is not doing the greatest but I can still harvest from it but in here I'm going to end up having carrots so I really need to get this, these guys out pretty soon I've got some lettuce here there's some more lettuce in there this is Tim's part but <laughs> there's some volunteer lettuce seeds in there and in here I've got echinacea I can I cannot pronounce this properly so I'm going to put this on the screen but it's just about to produce flowers how awesome is this and same here and then I've got salvias here the salvias have reseeded themselves so there are a couple more salvias around here but I've also got quite a bit of lettuce in here as well and I didn't see I didn't sow any of this lettuce it's just appeared then we have the scented geraniums it's so powerful the smell and same here again and I did have two anyway that were a little bit worse for wear so that's that and then actually <laughs> I've got lupins my lupins are coming back and 
I've not spoken too much about this, but I've got my vertical herb garden over there. That's doing pretty well. I'm going to do a separate video on that. And I've got the caterpillars down there. But you guys know me, I'm not into picture-perfect gardening. It's not perfect, but you know, it's a lot better than what I started off with. And I just hope that this video gets somebody else out of a funk. So yes, I neglected the garden for a bit, but you know, I've managed to turn it around in about a week or so. So thank you very much for hanging out with me. I hope you've enjoyed today. Um, <laughs> I know it was a bit of a mess of a video, but mm, it is what it is. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. Hopefully, I'll see you again soon. Bye!